We present My Favorite Husband, a new series based on the delightful stories of Isabel Scott Rorick's gay, sophisticated Mr. and Mrs. Cougar, starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning. The Cougats, Liz, busy young matron, and George, busy young fifth vice president of the bank, are one of the few couples we know who live together and like it. Let's look in on them now as Liz waits for George to come down to breakfast. Oh, Katie. Yes, Mrs. Cougat, what is it? Katie, you don't have to serve breakfast this morning. I'll serve Mr. Cougat myself. Oh, don't you feel well, Mrs. Cougat? Yes, but there's a special little favor I want from him, and if he thinks I cooked the breakfast, it might put him in a better frame of mind. Well, if he thinks you cooked it, Mrs. Cougat, I don't think he'll eat it. <laughs> well, fix something real nice, like uh, scrambled eggs. I'll make a nice omelet. Oh, you can always get around a man with food. I used to get anything I wanted from my first husband, Clarence. I just cook him an omelet and put in a whole bottle of Tabasco sauce. A whole bottle? Uh-huh. And I wouldn't give him a glass of water till he said yes. <laughs> well, just leave out the Tabasco. I've done everything to keep George in a nice frame of mind this morning. All right. Liz! Hey, Liz, where are my clothes? I can't find them anywhere. They're all there, George. I hung them up. What did you do that for? I had them all neatly laid out on the floor where I could find them. Hello? Oh, hello, Anne. Lunch? How can you think of it? Aren't you going to the tryouts for the play? The Young Matrons League. It's in the paper this morning. On the society page. I just put it in front of, of George's place at the table. And you know what, Anne? Anatole Brodney is going to be in the audience on opening night. Yes, the famous Hollywood director. He used to live in town here. Oh, I hope George will let me try out. Oh, oh, here he comes. I'll call you later, Ann. <clears throat> Good morning, dear. Good morning, then. Well, what's for breakfast? Katie! Uh, I told Katie to work around the house. Are you cooking breakfast? Well, you're my favorite husband. Okay. What do you want from me, Liz? <laughs> me? Want? Uh, Mrs. Pugat, uh, can I see you a minute? What is it, Katie? Something wrong? Uh, well, um, uh, uh, Go right ahead, Katie. Tell me. I have nothing to keep from Mr. Pugat. Uh, well, uh, breakfast won't be ready for a while because the omelet you were cooking spoiled and you had to make another one. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. I hope you didn't put too much salt in it, Liz. Don't be funny. Hey, why don't you read your paper, George? You mean you let me? Certainly, dear. See, it's all set for you. All you have to do is read. Oh, who opened this paper to the society page? Now, you could do worse than read the society page. There's some very interesting things there. There are? Mm-hmm. Well, let's see. Well, I should say, just look at this. At a late afternoon ceremony... Deborah Ann Rasmussen became the bride of Arthur Spondulik Cranfeather, Jr. Uh, why don't you read something else, dear? No, this is exciting. The bride wore a bouffant gown of white chantilly lace, and her head was covered by a lace cap from which fell a large veil. That's veil. <laughs> veal, veil, they all look silly. The bridesmaids wore aqua taffeta gowns. Oh, and... why don't you try somewhere around the middle of the page, darling, down there? Oh, yes, here. Overheard at tea. People wouldn't be so incompatible if the men had more income and the girls were more patable. <laughs> well, that's very good. Here, give me the paper. I'll see if I can find something. Oh, now, wait a minute, dear wife. Uh, what's all this interest in the society page? Oh, uh -huh. Young Matrons League to present annual play. Oh, really? I didn't see that. Hmm. There's one thing I can't understand. It's why a bunch of respectable married women want to get up on a stage and make jackasses out of themselves. I don't see anything wrong with it. 
They don't make jackasses out of themselves. Oh, come now, Liz. You know they do. You didn't feel this way last year. You let me be in the play. That's what started me feeling this way. <laughs> oh, you think I'm a jackass. I didn't say that. Well, you implied it. Didn't you? No comment. George Cougat, you are calling your wife a jackass by keeping your mouth shut. Well, think of the trouble I'd get into if I opened it. <laughs> oh, look, why don't you forget it, honey? I know what you're leading to. You want to be in the play. I do not. I didn't even hear about it until you happened to find it in the paper. Really? Don't you believe me? Oh, certainly, dear. I wonder what play they're going to do. John Loves Mary. <gasps> well, forget it, Liz. The answer is no. Not after last year. <laughs> that wasn't my fault. Well, you're, you're supposed to feel at ease on the stage. Move around. Oh, I almost died when that fella came bounding in and called, Run for your life. The dam has broken. And you just sat there. <laughs> I know how you felt. I, I've had stage fright, too. I didn't have stage fright. Well, then why didn't you get up when the dam broke? Because when I sat down, a strap broke. <laughs> now, I'll tell you something else, George Cougar. There's going to be a famous Hollywood director in the audience on opening night, and I'll bet you if he sees me, he'll offer me a contract. Oh, Liz, stop it. You're talking like a child. Come on, we'll make a bet. How much? Oh, no. No, you don't. This is just a trick, so I'll let you be in the play. Well... I have to go to the office, dear. Sorry, I had to deprive you of a Hollywood career. Very funny. What has Betty Grable got that I haven't got? Or Lana Turner? Nothing, dear. In fact, you have something they haven't got. I have what? Me. <laughs> well, see you later, dear. If you want me, I'll be at the bank. Hello, Ann. Liz. I just spoke to George about being in the play. Yes, he put his foot down. Absolutely no. He was really definite about it. What time are we going to the tryouts? Of course I am. It's a challenge now. If I get the part, think how surprised George will be on opening night to say nothing of that Hollywood director. Who, me? Don't be silly. A Hollywood contract is the last thing in the world I want. I'd just like to show George I could get one if I wanted to. <laughs> Goodbye, Ann. Oh, I'll get the door, Mrs. Cougat. I know that horn. It's Mr. Cartwright. Good old Corey. Gee, I'm glad he dropped by. Uh, what does Mr. Cartwright do for a living, Mrs. Cougat? Oh, nothing, Katie. He's just a very eligible bachelor. Well, from what I gather, he chases women for a living. <laughs> now, that's... That's not exactly fair, Katie. Women chase him for a living. Only none of them have caught him as yet. Well, I'll let him in. Greetings, dear. Heaven's gift to unmarried young America is here. <laughs> Corey Cartwright, am I glad you dropped by. I want you to help me with something. You know me, Liz. Anything up to murder. And for you, I may go a step farther. Who do you want me to rub out? I mean, uh, or should I say, whom do you want me to rub out? <laughs> You're never serious, are you? You get married someday. By the way, how's your new girlfriend? Which one? That little redhead. Which one? Her name was Mary. Which one? What was your last name? What a life you must lead. If I remember, it was Johnson. Mary Johnson. Well, she hasn't called me in ages. I've got her name in my book. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Here it is. Mary Johnson, R-H-R-W. Would you mind decoding that for me? Not at all. R-H, that means redhead. Mm -hmm. What's the other R for? Real. <laughs> and the, uh, the W is my kissing guide. Oh, I get it. Won't, huh? No. Will? No. Wow. <laughs> you know, you've got more on your girls than the FBI has. Next thing, you'll be giving them a loyalty check. Oh, enough about me and Amour. No, no, now, wait a minute. If, um, if you had my name in your book, what would it say? I have. Oh. Here. Oh, let's see. Liz Cougat. R-H-R-W? Keep going. W-I-W-G. Holy cow, what does that mean? Wish I were George. Oh, oh that's sweet. 
Corey. You're such a good friend. Now, what was on your pretty mind when I came in? Corey, George doesn't want me to be in the play the young matrons are putting on, but I want to get a part and show him I can act. Mm. Now, if, if I get a part, will you see that George is out somewhere on the nights I have to go to rehearsal? Sure, it'll be worth it to see the look on his face opening night. Gee, thanks, Corey. Now I have to rush right down to the tryout. Oh, me too. I'm picking up George, and we're having lunch with Anatole Brodney. Well, don't tell him you were here or say anything about... Who'd you say you were having lunch with? Whom? All right, whom is eating lunch with you? Anatole Brodney. He's an old college chum of ours who made good out in Hollywood. You know, I never thought he'd have what it takes. He was a real goof. Maybe that's what it takes. <laughs> Listen, Corey. Try to get George to bring him to the house, will you? If I can make an impression on him in my own home, it'll be half the battle. Well, I'll try, but I don't think George will go for it. Well, then you bring him. Promise me you'll try. Okay, promise. Thanks, Corey. You're a real pal. Let's come to order, girls. Girls. Girls to order. I'd like you to meet the director of our little show. <laughs> Miss Worthingill from the drama department of Sixley College. <laughs> How do you do? Before we start tryouts, I'd like to tell you about the way I direct. I stress uh, naturalness. <laughs> Every word you say must sound real, vital, and natural. <laughs> How many of us have heard an actress on the stage say to her fiancé, Darling, I love you. Oh, how much more believable it would have been to us if she had been natural and said, Darling, I love you. <laughs> Isn't she wonderful, Mrs. Kruger? What? Oh, oh, yes, yes. She could have been a great actress. Oh. Doesn't she remind you of Cornell? No, she reminds me of Notre Dame. <laughs> well, now to the parts. We have two main parts. One is a beautiful young girl of 18. Oh, oh that's just perfect for me. I think I like it. Oh, 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 the other part is a young matron of 36. This is the main part. Oh, well, I'll try it. But I'll have to be a pretty good actress to portray anyone that old. <laughs> Uh, good. <laughs> Let me look at you. Oh, my dear, you're just the type. Well, you don't have to get nasty about it. <laughs> now then, here is the scene I want you to read. You are crying your heart out because your lover has left you. Uh -huh. Suddenly, you hear the bark of a dog. Oh. It is his dog. He has come back. Uh -huh. You run to your lover, laughing now as hard as you were crying before. You say to him, hold me in your arms. Then seeing the dog is on the sofa, you say to it, leave quickly. You are not supposed to be in here. Oh, have you got it? Yes, yes. Now then, you are crying your heart out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You'll have to do better than that. I said you are crying your heart out. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing for? Because my lover is coming. <laughs> we haven't reached that part. I was showing you how to cry. Oh, I thought that was the dog. <laughs> we will continue. But you must practice that crying if you wish to get the part in the final auditions. Uh -huh. Now you hear the dog. Like you just heard a joke. This is a laugh of hysteria, wild and abandoned. Oh, you must practice that too. Now for your lines. Go ahead. 
Hold me in your arms. Leave quickly. You're not supposed to be in here. <laughs> not bad. Not bad at all. A little practice, and I think you'll be a strong contender for the part. Oh, don't worry, Mrs. Worthingill. I'll practice. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Cougat. Is there something wrong? No, Katie. I just had to run home for some papers I left in the study. Is uh, Mrs. Cougat home? Uh, yes. Yeah, she went out for a while, but she came back and went right into her room and closed the door. Hasn't come out since. Hmm. That doesn't sound like her. I hope she isn't sick. We'd, we'd better go and see. Oh, she hasn't looked any too well lately. Her door is still closed. I'll just not... <laughs> What's that? She's crying. Oh, the poor kid. I'd better go in and see what's the matter. Oh, now, wait a minute. Let's let's be sure it's not my fault. Our anniversary is in December. Her birthday is in August. Her mother's birthday is in June. No, I'm in the clear. Oh, she's crying her little heart out. <laughs> oh, uh... Come in with me, Katie. I get all funny when she cries. <laughs> did you hear what I heard? I'm not sure. What did you hear? It's a dog. She's got a dog in there. Oh, well, she was probably crying because she didn't think I'd let her keep it. Oh, the poor sensitive soul. <laughs> Well, she's all right now. That's all it was, Katie. She's got a dog in there. Take me in your arms. I'd better go and take a look at that dog. I, uh, uh, I have some work to do. Quiet. I, I don't think she knows we're here. Leave quickly. You're not supposed to be here. She knows we're here. Let me in. Liz, let me in. Do you hear? Hello, George. What's new? What's new? What are you doing in here? Me? I was just sleeping. You woke me up. <laughs> What's the matter with you? What are you whistling for? Huh? Nothing. <laughs> Can't a fellow whistle? Well, what are you looking under the bed for? Did you lose anything? Oh, I don't know yet. <laughs> What's in the closet, Liz? You know what's in the closet. Well, I'll just take another look. Huh. Nothing but clothes. What'd you expect to find? The Tony twins? <laughs> what was going on in here, Liz? I told you I was asleep. Maybe I had a nightmare. That's it, I had a nightmare. Or was it a daymare? It's daytime, isn't it? Uh, you'd better lie down again, dear. Uh, try to get some rest. Oh, it, it's nothing, George. You run along. I'll be all right. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe I'd better stay home for the rest of the day. No, no, no. I'll be fine, honest. Well, all right, but but I'll come home early, and and don't get up. Just rest. All right, honey. Bye, bye. Katie. Uh, yes, Mister Cougar. I'm worried about her. I, I think I'll see a psychiatrist and get some advice. <laughs> Dr. Schweinkamp will see you now, Mr. Cougar. Thank you. Hey, good afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon, Doctor. My name is Cougat. I see. Lie down, Mr. Cougar. <laughs> oh, it's uh, it's not for me. It's it's for someone else. Of course, I understand perfectly. Lie down, Mr. Cougar. <laughs> But I'm serious. I came to see you about someone else. Everybody does. Lie down, Mr. Cougar. I won't lie down. Xavier. My name is George Cougar. Can't even carry a tune. 
Now, now look, Doctor. My wife is acting strangely, and I want your advice. Certainly, Mr. Cougat. And I won't lie down. As you wish, as you wish. Uh, Mr. Cougat. What? Do you mind if I lie down? <laughs> no. I've always wondered what it was like. <laughs> Say, it's nice here. After this, I think I lie down and let the patient sit up. <laughs> okay, uh, pardon me, Mr. Cougar. Uh, what were you saying? It's Cougat. I want to tell you about my wife. Ah. She locks herself in her room. Oh, this is very common with married people. <laughs> but but you don't understand. She laughs. Then she cries. Then she barks like a dog. Uh, that's not quite so common. <laughs> In fact, that, uh, that sounds like a serious case of manic depressive psychosis aggravated by alternate canine insanity, uh, prompted by a subconscious desire to put on the dog. <laughs> oh, that, that, that sounds awful. Uh, tell me, Mr. Kugat, uh, do you have a large income? Oh, I, I do moderately well. I'm fifth vice president of a bank. Oh, very interesting. Well, uh, do you think that has an effect on my wife? No, but it will have an effect on my bill. <laughs> I'll tell you what I want to do, Mr. Cougar. I, I don't want to alarm your wife. I'd like to see her in her home environment. Uh, why don't you call her up and tell her you are bringing a friend home, eh? A, a business acquaintance. I'll come over this evening. If you like, I'll come for dinner. You come to dinner? Oh, thank you. I'll be glad to come. Well, all right, Doctor. Anything you say. Hello. Hello, dear. How are you, honey? Oh, I'm fine. Dear, I, uh, I'm bringing a friend home for dinner, an old college chum. Will it be all right? Oh, an old college chum. Well, of course, dear. What's his name? Oh, uh, 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 Art Jones. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see you later, dear. All right. Bye-bye. Katie. Oh, I can see his little game. Katie. Uh, yes, Mrs. Cougar. There'll be one extra for dinner, Katie. My husband thinks he's going to play a little trick on me. He does? Yes, he's bringing a big Hollywood director home, only he wants me to think he's somebody else. Then tomorrow, he'll lord it over me and say, See, a Hollywood director in your own home, all to yourself, all evening, and you didn't make any impression. That's what he thinks. No impression, eh? I'm going to make a dent. Well, here we are, Doctor. No, one moment before we go in. Uh, don't be nervous, Mr. Nougat. Uh, that's Cougat. <laughs> It doesn't matter. <laughs> now, now, don't worry if she seems to act normal. I can tell her condition by subtle little actions and movements. Uh, don't do anything to arouse her. All right. Here we go. Liz? Liz? Oh, oh, there you are. Uh, Liz, uh, I'd like you to meet, meet an old friend of mine. Uh, Art Jones. Uh, how do you do, Mrs. Cougar? Hello, boys. <laughs> Say, I'm certainly glad you came up to see me. What? How about a drink, boys? Now, Liz, please. There's a sofa over there, Mr. Jones. Why don't you get out of that hard chair and slip into something more comfortable? <laughs> well... Maybe Mr. Jones likes that chair, darling. Darling! Now you call me darling! Oh! But what am I when we're alone, your slave? You beat me with a cane and push my poor, broken body down the stairs. <laughs> oh, I don't care for myself, but you push the children after me! The children? I did not! Then where are they? <laughs> on the sham in front of your friends. I'm leaving, leaving this life of hypocrisy. Leaving, do you hear? <laughs> well, Doctor, what do you think? 
Don't speak to me, you can. Now, wait a minute. No, I, I, I would suggest that you come to see me every day, Mr. Cougar. You have a serious condition. I tell you, this is ridiculous. We have no children. Oh, she's making this all up. Oh, oh wait a minute till I get the door. Violet, will you buy a poor old lady's violet, Sonny? I haven't eaten in three weeks. Liz, you sound like a goat. <laughs> Now, take that shawl off your head and come in here. Uh, just a moment, sir. Here you are, old lady. Fifty cents, keep it. Blessings on you, sir. Blessings. Blessings. I apologize, Mr. Cougar. Now things sound different, don't they? Oh, yeah, yeah. You should both come to see me. <laughs> now, 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 quickly. You have a maid? Yes. Well, ring for the maid. We're going to find out how your wife has been acting around the house today. Yeah. Well, I am ringing. I don't know why she doesn't answer. Oh, darn this bell. Maybe it's broken. All right, all right. I'm coming, Governor. Don't get out about it. Oh, no. <laughs> Leah, stop this. It's ridiculous. Oh. Oh, you don't like me as a cockney, eh? Well, perhaps you'd like me better as a South Sea Island native. Liz, get up off the floor. What are you doing? Me, Candeleo. <laughs> That's good. Me love white man. You don't love me? No. Me answer doorbell. <laughs> Well, here's Cartwright, a man of his word. Oh, hello, Corey. Uh, where's Liz? Over there on the floor. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, but I, I don't know what you're doing on the floor, Liz, but uh, let me present this fellow with me. Mrs. George Cougat, Anatole Brodney. I'm pleased to... Anatole Brodney? Ah! Then who's this character? <laughs> Allow me to present myself, Mrs. Cougat. Reinhold Schweinkampf, psychiatrist. Oh, Oh, help me with her, Corey. She's fainted. Hello? Hello. May I speak to Mrs. Cougat, please? Uh, Mrs. Cougat is upstairs resting. Uh, this is her husband. May I help you? Well, this is Mrs. Worthingill, the director of the Young Matron's Play. I called to tell Mrs. Cougat that she got the main part. Congratulations, Mr. Cougat. Well, I, I think you'd better forget about my wife for that part, Mrs. Worthingill. After the experience she had tonight, she assured me she has given up the theater for good. Oh, that's too bad. Well, uh, goodbye, Mrs. Worthingill. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Cougat. Mrs. Worthingill, Mrs. Worthingill. What? Hello? listening on the telephone upstairs in the bedroom. Oh, then you heard what your husband said. Yes, but don't pay any attention to it. I'll see you at rehearsal in the morning. 